Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Data Scientist Podcast. On this episode, we have with us Martin Neuhart, who is an enterprise data scientist based in New York. Uh, Martin, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, thanks. Uh, yeah, so I'm an enterprise data scientist with uh, Optimo Information Technologies. Uh, we do a lot of work with the U.S. government uh, around mobile applications and data integration. Um, I've been around data for probably about I had well, most of my career, about 20 years in IT. And uh, a few years ago, I decided that I wanted to explore that a little bit further. So I went and got my master's degree in data science from Berkeley. Uh, and I've kind of taken it from there and moved from being more of a, an architect back into dealing with data in a day-to-day -day type uh, environment. Mm -hmm. So how much of your actual work now, you feel it's data science versus architecture? So currently, I would say it's probably mostly architecture, hoping mm -hmm. to move towards data science. So a couple of the programs that I've worked on recently, we've built up the data integration to be able to start mm -hmm. moving the data to places that can be uh, used by data scientists uh, mm -hmm. to you know, use more machine learning techniques and things to replace business rules. Uh, mm -hmm. We see a lot of business rules that are quite fragile out in industry. And you know, we've been trying to get data organized to make it so that we can use it uh, in that capacity. Um, so that's that's kind of where I've been spending most of my time over the last couple of years. And as we know, as data scientists know, a lot of times the majority of time is spent in wrangling that data, uh, trying to get it into the shape that you need it to use it and bring value to your organization. Yeah, absolutely. And based on your opinion, um, which one do you think is more difficult, um, data science or the architecture piece? So I'm going to answer that in two ways. Um, mm -hmm. First off, I think that many times the architecture is there and the technology is there to be able to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the most difficult piece is getting the data moved into that architecture to be able to be used by the data scientist. Because I think mm -hmm. once you actually have the data organized and you understand your architectural, sorry, your architectural and your organizational goals, mm -hmm. um, it really becomes a lot easier to do the data science work, right? There's so many great tools out there now that are able to be utilized to, to drive, you know, if you're gonna do machine learning, right? You don't need to go write the algorithm yourself. They're there to be used. They're written in Python. They're, you know, they're there yeah. in Java, right? But getting that data structured and getting it um, labeled, you know, if you're gonna be using supervised learning or things like that uh, is, is, a, is a pretty daunting task, right? Organizing mm -hmm. data is, is very difficult. Um, not just getting the architecture right, getting the ontology right, all that kind of stuff uh, to be able to then, you know, drive a good resolution out of whatever machine learning and, you know, AI you might do. So you feel that um, it, it might be more difficult for someone now to become a data engineer or data architect than a data scientist. I guess given that you studied a master's in data science pretty recently, you're probably very well qualified to answer this question. And also we have quite a few people in our audience who sometimes are interested in converting to data science. Um, so I guess your input here is gonna be very, very useful. Yeah, so um, yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> I mean, I think it comes down to a, a little bit about what your passion is in it, right? Mm -hmm. I think that equally, they're probably technically, you know, on par with each other, right? Moving data is difficult. Analyzing data is difficult, right? Or can be, mm -hmm. right? But if you really enjoy either aspect of those pieces of work, like if you really enjoy getting in and transforming data and getting it laid out correctly so that people can take advantage of that, um, mm -hmm. then, you know, data engineering is a, is a great route to take. Um, I think that, you know, there's great tools out there for, for doing that. Um, and, you know, the data science aspect uh, you know, on the flip side, if you enjoy that analysis and you enjoy mm -hmm. thinking about how it is that you're going to use the data um, and being involved in the process from the beginning about letting the data architects know how they should be setting up that data so that it's able to be used by um, a data scientist. Mm -hmm. I think both of those avenues are, they're not mutually exclusive from each other, but they're definitely two different job types, right? Being a data scientist, um, you kind of run the whole entire stack, right? Moving data. Um, also, um, you know, analyzing that data where in the data engineering aspect, you really are trying to get that data from point A to point mm. B to be utilized. 
um, you know, for me, I, I enjoy the analysis side much more mm -hmm. than I enjoy the engineering side um, and the architecture side of it. There are two different skill sets, essentially, right? I think they really are, right? They, I, I, I teach a data science course as well at, the, um, at Binghamton University. And mm -hmm. I talk about this, right? Even within data scientists, there are many different types of data scientists, right? You have data yes. scientists that are creating brand new algorithms and coming up with new ways of doing things that haven't been done before. And then there's data scientists that are really like a scientist where they're working with the data, but in a lab type um, environment where they have to do the data bringing in and transformation. And, uh, you know, they have to do kind of that whole entire work. Like if you're in a yeah. laboratory as a scientist, right? You're not going to go ask somebody to build this little machine for you. If it's going to help you with your research, you're going to go do it yourself, right? There's, da there's data scientists that are like that as well. And then there's data scientists that board are kind of on that data analyst side because the data has been moved. It's been placed somewhere for them. And then you're able to go and grab that data and start working with it right away. So I yeah. kind of see, you know, the data scientists will probably get sliced and diced as it goes down you know, the line, it's kind of been a newer sort of um, name for jobs. And I think that as we go along, there'll be more fidelity in that name. Yeah, I think that um, the landscape is definitely constantly shifting. So I, don't, I think that the data science is a bit of an umbrella term. It's something I've been also discussing in my workshops and my book. Um, and in reality, there are many different types of data scientists. And the thing with these types is that the origin story, what uh, they've been taught in the past can be very, very different. So uh, someone might have been taught statistics, someone else might have been done something completely different. And this is very important when hiring because uh, many managers, many CEOs do not appreciate the subtleties of, <laughs> of this, right? And the right. implications, I guess. It's great. So, and given that you, you're working for some government contracts, I was very interested to hear um, what you have to say about the process of digital transformation or using data science in government, um, specifically because um, everyone is talking about digital transformation. Ever since the days of the internet boom, there's always like a new technology and digital transformation is one again, it's once again at the forefront. Now it's definitely AI. Uh, which we're seeing at both the corporate and the government level. And then it's also blockchain, which seems to be becoming more and more popular, especially in Europe. There are many conversations around using blockchain for vaccination passwords. Um, and obviously, this then can be a launchpad for the implementation of blockchain in other areas. So I was really curious to hear um, what's happening in the government around, um, but on a more hands-on way, right? Because you really dealing with with many uh, data related challenges but not from an expert level but you know you're really in the um, in the first line of battle so i was curious to hear some of the challenges that you're facing maybe some things which are surprisingly well organized for a government <laughs> and you wouldn't <laughs> expect to work so well so yeah in stores to share <laughs> yeah uh, i mean just speaking in the government in general i mean there's so many you know, levels of it all the way across the yes. government somewhere it really is, you know, as advanced as you're ever going to get, right? There's a lot of work that goes on in the U.S. Yeah. government, which is incredibly, incredibly advanced. And in those daily hands-on stuff, they're very much like any other corporation that I've ever worked at, right? I work mm -hmm. at any big organization is kind of the same. I worked at Hewlett Packard for a number of years, Lockheed Martin. Um, and they are, I find a lot of similarities between big corporations and big government type, you know, pieces within the US government and the organizations that we're working with, a lot of times there's, you know, they have a lot of data, they have data all over the place. They're like yes. any organization like that. And they're trying to get that data organized. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes because of the way that the, you know, government is set up with different components and different agencies and things like that. Uh, there's a lot of silos of data that have been set up over the years. And getting those organizations to work together is difficult just because of the way a government is set up. It's not because of mm. anybody within the typical organization saying, no, I don't want to do that. But the way funding is kind of handed out across government organizations, right? When you mm -hmm. start at the top and they allocate their funds down to different places, it's it makes it a little more difficult sometimes to reach across different agencies and work together because there has to be um, you know, transfer of funds to be able to pay for that to be done, right? Yeah. Same thing happens in big companies, right? You want to work with somebody, but they're like, who's going to fund this and who's going to work on it? 
So yeah. I, you see a lot of that kind of stuff. So when you start to branch out and work in different organizations, so we're working currently in an organization and we're working across components, right? Mm -hmm. So we're working with one component and trying to work and get data from another component. And it feels frustrating sometimes because it's not a rapid process. And it's not because you have to work through all of these different kind of, you know, funding structures and getting everything set up and, and who owns what data and what mm -hmm. kind of privacy concerns there might be because we have data on people, right? Because it's a government organization. That's mm -hmm. what they do and that's what they broker in, right? So keeping track of that and making sure that you have a good way to go in and say, all right, I want to use your data. What do I have to do in order to use your data? Who has to sign up for that? If I'm a contractor for that, you know, for the government, is that a different set of rules than if I was actually in that, you know, government organization as a government employee? You yeah. know, how do you work through all of this kind of stuff to actually be able to finally grab that data and move it somewhere, right? Yeah. And what happens in that meantime, because these things take so long, um, and when you approach them, lots of people will just go, well, I'm going to go solve this with Excel because I got to get my job done. I can't wait for you to get done. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to go grab all my data. I'm going to put it into Excel. Then they build these incredibly complex Excel spreadsheets that are doing all of this work. We've all been they, there. <laughs> yeah, tons of manual churning, right? So there's no difference working, I don't think, in the government. Sometimes it might move a little bit slower than a corporation, but mm -hmm. I, I don't necessarily sense that, right? I think that, you know, you always have these organizational challenges of who owns the data, who's going to let you have the data, how do they let you have it, how do you open up your network ports to move the data from one organization to another organization, all mm -hmm. those sorts of challenges exist um, within the government, just like any other corporation, so. That's very interesting to hear. And um, have you found that um, you have used any frameworks or structured way of approaching these challenges in one shape or form, uh, in any way, shape or form? But the reason I'm asking you is because I'm a big fan of trying to systematize processes. And I think that um, while there's lots of work that has been done in business planning. I mean, if, if someone's interested in entrepreneurship, then you have all kinds of like easy tools to use, like the business model canvas and all that, um, which in reality, they're just like, you know, uh, some a way to, to just organize someone's thoughts, uh, essentially. And, and there's like some similar, let's say, Process, like models which have been developed for other business processes. And I've, I've been doing some work over the last few years trying to do this for data science. And I think that uh, most people, even if they're not really using a process or a framework explicitly, they might be using something implicitly based on their own experience. So what, what, uh, what, what have you seen? Are you using something uh, explicitly or are you just basing everything off your experience? Yeah, I'm really curious to hear more about that. Yeah, so there's a couple of different aspects to that. So, you know, there's when I'm getting the data, right, there's a process that I would follow. You know, I mm -hmm. have a kind of a canned spreadsheet of data that I need in order to move data, right? Like the yeah. understanding that I'm going to need to know about that data in order to move it and then actually make it useful after that, right? So there's kind of yeah. a process there. But if you're talking kind of more on the data science side and doing a, you know, where I want to be able to get to of, you know, using the data actually to impact the organization. Um, yeah, I do follow a process. Um, a lot of it is kind of based on what I learned, you know, during my education and over mm -hmm. my years of being here, um, as well as the process that I kind of developed that I teach to my students, um, where you start with an objective. You know, you want to have the objective that you have in mind before you ever even start doing anything with any data. What is it that I'm trying to do? What mm -hmm. decision am I trying to impact? right, all the way through to the very end of telling the story about what it is that you've done in between. And those steps in between are really, you know, saying, okay, now that I've got my objective, you know, what data am I going to need in order to do this, right? Or actually, after I've got my objective, how am I going to test out that objective, right, that I actually met it? What hypotheses yeah. am I going to create, you know, all of that kind of level. And then in order to test those hypotheses, right, what's my null hypothesis, in order to go in and test that, what data am I going to need? Am I going to need to create experiments to go then create, you know, create this data? Does this data data already exist somewhere within mm -hmm. the, you know, network of data that's out there? Is some government organization have it that I can go get it, or is it available within my organization or in my company? How am I going to get that data put together? 
then what you know experiments am I going to run on that data in order to try to disprove my null, right? And to make sure that there isn't anything you know that I'm missing out there that this isn't just random. And then yeah. once you've run all those experiments and you've done everything, you know, how am I going to build those models out to make them useful so that when new data comes in that I can just test it against my, you know, hypotheses right away and then kind of categorize that data. So, you know, that's kind of the process that I follow. And then once you get to the end, you're going to obviously tell your story about what it is that has happened during that. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's kind of how the process is broken down to me. I have you know, I could send you a slide deck that just says these are the six steps that I follow whenever I'm doing a data science project. And what about the data strategy front? So, I mean, you mentioned some of the challenges of working with organizations of a certain size and above. Um, did you find that you had to educate uh, people that you would work with who are not necessarily data scientists? Did you find that you had to climb up the ladder to um, help uh, the decision makers uh, understand how data science should be integrated within the organization or did you find that these things are not necessary and you could just work um you know on your own or with your team without really having to worry too much about what's happening like essentially in a silo right yeah that that struggle is always real right because just like you said a little while ago with the when you're talking about what data science is it means so much different it means so many different things to so many different people yeah. Uh, so, you know, really, for me, I always try to turn it to, you know, the data science aspect to what are you trying to accomplish as a business or an organization? Mm -hmm. What is that end goal that you're trying to achieve? Now, let's see where the piece parts of this umbrella called data science fit to move your organization in that direction. Yes. Because, you know, too often, I'm sure you've seen it a bunch of times, too. People really like to, you know, jump in, grab that newest technology and just start running. Um, and, you know, we all know that that can get you to a certain level, but it's never going to transform you into kind of a data organization, a data driven organization. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're really thinking about doing that, um, there's constant education that has to happen. It's, it's that way in anything. So if we think about, you know, for a long time, there was development and operations, right? If we go back to, you know, IT 101, we had development and operations. And then they were like, well, you know, we really should have development and operations work together. Right. And there was, you know, and then they were like, okay, then we need security to be part of that as well. And I yeah. think the revolution we're going to see now a little bit is that data has to be on that exact same level. It's always been something that supported those. Right. I don't think it's ever really had the seat at the table at the very front when you're talking with your organization. You know, it's like DevSec data ops, right? It's like this yeah. whole thing that needs to happen because there should be data scientists involved very early in a process helping to educate. And helping to say, hey, when you collect that data, why don't you label that column over there and, and throw on the, what the result was? Because yeah. we need to know what the result was when it happened so that later on we can look at it and give you some really good insight. If we're trying to derive the result, we're going to probably get that wrong, yeah. right? So let's start collecting the right type of data all the way through the entire process. So I think this, you know, to your point, you constantly have to do that. And I think that there's going to be more and more like with the chief data officers coming in at the C, you know, C-suite level, mm -hmm. there's going to be more and more of saying, okay, how do we put data on the same footing as security and, you know, development slash IT and, you know, um, the operations and maintenance of a, of a, um, a big system. So, yeah, I really believe that you have to have that conversation and continue to have that conversation with the backdrop of, What's what's my goal as an organization? So essentially, you're saying that data science um, needs to become some sort of first class citizen in the corporate structure, basically, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, look, it's it's coming from a data scientist, right? It obviously, yeah, it's, it's the most important. But so many times, I've seen that people have, uh, you know, they get a pile of data. And they go, hey, just go get a data scientist now, and they're going to give us some really cool answers out of this pile of data. Yeah. But the yeah. data was, you know, it may have been well structured. They might have a data warehouse. They've done all these things, but it was never thought about being used for how it would drive your organization. It was thought yeah. about being used for reporting, compliance, all those sorts of things. And when you get into that idea of, no, I want to drive my organization by this, how do I do that? Well, you need data scientists to be helping you. Mm choose that goal, right? Not, you know, and, and, and also helping you structure the data so that when you actually get to the data scientist that's going to do the analysis for you, they have not only the tools 
and architecture at their disposal, but they actually have the data as well. Yeah, absolutely agree with this. That's why within also my, my own work of, of um, really focused a lot on helping decision makers understand data science. It's one of the reasons I started the Tesser Academy. I've written up a book on that topic uh, because most, um, I think most uh, decision makers think that data science starts when you just hire someone to solve a particular problem but or a riddle or whatever it is that that you have in your head but but in reality it starts much earlier than that right and it starts from the moment that um, like the people you described later on have all these excel spreadsheets and they're trying yeah. to to do something with it yeah. uh, so i think that's that's a great point um, I think we have to conclude in a few minutes. Uh, okay. Would you like to, to add anything before we conclude? Yeah, I think just kind of going back to, you know, what we're doing a little bit within the government organization and what we're trying mm -hmm. to do is, uh, you know, they have that situ situation right now. There's a lot of spreadsheets, there's data yes. in all kinds of disparate systems. They're really trying to work through that, right? And And what happens many times is that we look at the process of being how the process is now, and then how it is that we're gonna fix that process and make it better through data science. Mm -hmm. When really there's certain aspects that you can do if you take a step back to say, well, we don't need to follow that process anymore. So taking that look at a higher level of saying, yeah, well, you spend 40 hours doing this, then 40 hours doing this, then 40 hours doing this in order to get to that Excel spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. right that then you use to spend another 40 hours on building a report to build 40 hours to look yeah. at that report to give an answer mm -hmm. you can go all the way around that to the answer right so there's always this you know kind of push and pull of well you need to be getting things done and moving data and you know adding value to looking at the whole entire process and to you mm -hmm. saying that changing processes data really gives you an amazing way to change processes and change the way that you do business because now you're going to get the answers that you need without maybe even having to have all that process and all the steps that people had to go through in the first place. So, you know, that's where we're working through and, you know, trying to get from point A to point B is never in a straight line. Um, but, you know, understanding where that point B is and understanding where you want to be um, is incredibly important to any data science project and to any data science, any data project in general. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with this. And uh, again, it goes back to what I mentioned earlier. I think the, um, the more you work in data science, the more you realize that um, data science shouldn't only be left uh, to the data scientists, right? So you need other people within an organization to participate in this um, because data science touches upon so many aspects of a business that you can't just say, oh, you know, I'm just going to sit at this corner and I'm going to just you know do my own thing and this is not i'm not going to interact with the rest of the organization and this goes both ways you know so some data scientists need to understand this but also leaders need to be aware of that as well i completely Great. agree yep that's 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 where i always am it needs to be integrated across it's a you know beginning to end sort of thing it isn't one spot where you just grab a data scientist and say this is what you need to do and from the organizational aspect, that's the same thing. You know, it needs to be understood that I, I need these people involved kind mm -hmm. of across uh, across the space of whatever my problem is and whatever objective I'm trying to reach as an organization. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Great. I think this was a great conversation. Well, thank you very much, Martin. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate it. And, you know, at some point, I know I heard on the uh, um, data board the other day that we sit on that you you know i can get access to your book so i'd like to have access to that at some point so oh yeah um, i actually need to send it to you uh, for those of you who are listening um this is uh there's another interview with joseph uh, yakura um, who is the head of, of of this board that martin uh, is talking about is the international association for data quality and uh, there's an episode that we've done with joseph on uh, supply chain on the supply chain audit guidelines which actually is very relevant not only for supply chains but for any organization who's facing some of the issues that we discussed today with martin um how do how do i get started with data science the quality of the data etc so make sure to check this out and uh, thanks everyone thanks for listening to this i hope you found this useful and informative make sure to check out the datascientist.com for more content around data science and blockchain and we hope to see you again soon thank you thank you <laughs>